Grabbing a medallion off spawn and retaining it can be quite challenging, but I've discovered a very reliable method to achieve this. By following the six steps of my method, I can guarantee that you will leave Grand Glacier with the medallion and the mythic enforcer AR every time. For the first step, land near the main entrance of the hotel, located on the north side of the POI. The primary reason for doing so is the presence of a vending machine where you need to buy four big pots. Consume two of these and keep the remaining two in your inventory. This strategic move can prove to be crucial later on. Completing this simple step and ensures you have full shields and are combat ready. Collecting gold bars is exceptionally easy this season, so I anticipate you'll have more than enough to make these purchases each time you try my method. The second step involves looting while maintaining a high level of awareness of your surroundings. The hotel's vertical layout with multiple stories and numerous small rooms makes it easy to hide and execute sneak attacks. It's crucial to differentiate between NPC footsteps and sounds and those created by real opponents. NPCs typically walk slowly and their on-screen footstep logos flash more steadily compared to those of other players. If you observe a fast-moving icon, it's likely a real player, as NPCs generally don't sprint or move quickly. The sound of someone pickaxing or opening a chest is more often associated with real players, as NPCs do not typically engage in such actions. There are various other cues to distinguish a real player from an NPC, and if you have additional methods in mind, feel free to leave a comment down below. The third step is about pushing real players at the right time. Ideally, you don't want to be the first to engage with Montag and his NPCs. Instead, let opponents initiate the conflict. Being the initial aggressor may attract a larger number of players to you, given your recent drop in the POI. Typically, a real enemy will eventually engage with the NPCs and Montague. In such cases, adopt a sneaky approach and patiently wait for the perfect time to third party. If you spot the enemy, wait for them to be shooting or reloading before striking. It can be challenging to discern a real enemy approaching while you're engaged with NPCs due to numerous distractions. Keep in mind that when Montague's HP bar becomes very low, you have no choice but to push the enemy. Otherwise, you'll miss the chance to grab the medallion. If you found these tips valuable so far, be sure to click on the like button. Thank you. The fourth step involves reassessing the surroundings, similar to the second step, but now with an improved loadout. Your decision-making process at this point revolves around analyzing whether to continue third-party enemies engaged with NPCs or to take on the challenge of fighting Montague yourself. Assuming there are no real enemies left and you're confident in initiating the fight for the medallion, the fifth step comes into play. Several considerations and tactics should be applied. Firstly, fighting in an open area increases the risk of getting third-partied from multiple angles. To mitigate this, aim to attract the NPCs into a small room, reducing the directions you need to be aware of and minimizing the risk of being shot in the back. Additionally, engage in short bursts of combat, fire, then reload your guns while taking cover. This approach allows you to monitor for real opponents attempting to third party, giving you the advantage. Keep in mind that NPCs may chase you down, but their accuracy is generally low, making it unlikely for them to eliminate you. If you find your shields or elf depleting, seek refuge in a room to make the NPCs lose track of you and stop shooting. Eliminating the boss can often be achieved in multiple stints, taking breaks to reload and reposition. The sixth step comes into play once you have the medallion in hand and you should anticipate being pushed. As a medallion holder, you are now visible on anyone's minimap, increasing the likelihood of facing attackers. The timing of when you grab the medallion affects the intensity of these encounters, with earlier grabs resulting in more chances to defend yourselves against enemies. It's crucial to assess and estimate the number of remaining players at Grand Glacier. If confident that no one else is left, focus on defending against against those entering from outside the POI, often arriving in cars. Monitor on-screen car logos for advanced warnings and be prepared. Finally, decide whether to enter the vault based on the storm's location and its imminent movement. If already inside the circle, it's best to go for the vault. If the storm is approaching or about to move, consider using a car for safer relocation, potentially adding to the closest vault at reckless railways. If you want to get more zero build tips, make sure to subscribe to my channel. It's free. Also, if you made it this far, this means you'll enjoy the next video you see on on screen because I will give you 20 underrated zero build tips that will improve your gameplay. See you over there!